Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome again to Inspirational Wednesday. Today is Wednesday, August the 5th, 2015. My name is Pastor Al. It's my privilege, it's my honor, it's my pleasure to be here to facilitate this call to uh, to be able to pray with you and pray for you to the Lord God Almighty that he move in a mighty way on your behalf in your life that he would show himself strong and powerful and mighty that he will show the world that he still exists, that he is on the throne, and that he, he interacts and he intervenes and he intercesses in our life, intercedes in our lives, uh, uh, be, not because we're so good, not because he's so perfect, because he loves us so very much and that the world will come to know him in the fullness thereof. Again, we believe here that uh, prayer changes things. We believe that literally God responds to prayer that no quicker than we can say amen, then our God is on the job. He's doing whatever it is needs to be done so that he may be able to be, he, he may be able to do that. That which needs to be done so that we may be able to serve him as the disciples and stewards that he's called us to be. Again, we are happy to be here. We're overjoyed that you decided to join us this morning. And with that said, we're going to begin with our opening word of prayer. Then we're going to follow that up with a short devotional. Then we're going to get into what I call the best part of this call, which is the prayer session. This call where we get to hear from you. We get to pray for you and the people connected to you. We get to literally uh, join you where you are with the prayer requests, the praise reports, the prayers that you have and be able to, to approach the throne together and, and to ask God, to beg God, to plead God, to petition God, to do what only he can do in our lives um, so that we can experience his rich favor and that the world, we may also get another testimony about how how our God is able to do an awesome and amazing thing. With that said, let us go ahead and have our opening morning prayer. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, God, we come to you right now thanking you, God, for this day, for this is the day you have made. We are rejoicing. We are glad in it. Now, God, we pray this moment, this instant, this hour, that you, God, would be close to us, be near to us, that you would hear us as we lift up our prayer requests, as we lift up our praise reports, as we lift up our prayers, as we share words of encouragement with one another, that, God, you will be present with us and that, God, you would re Reveal to us what it is we need to have revealed so that we may be able to serve you with grace, may be able to serve you with excellence, may, may be able to serve you purposefully, proficiently, and productively. So God, do what only you can do now. Replace all of us, fill us with your Holy Spirit, sensitize us, and, and make us empathetic to what others, other persons are dealing with so that God, when we share, we share in such a way that persons are built up, not torn down, that persons are encouraged and not discouraged, that persons are uh, feel empowered to be who you call them to be. Now, God, we thank you, we love you, and we bless your holy name. It's in your son's mighty, matchless, marvelous, and magnificent name that we do pray. Amen. Amen, everyone. Amen. The scriptorial focus for this morning's devotional comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the 26th chapter, the 56th verse. That's Matthew chapter 26, verse 56. Now, in the, our, for our scriptorial focus this morning, I'm just focusing on the last part of that verse, the last sentence in that verse. That sentence reads, Then all the disciples deserted Jesus and fled. Thus far the word. The title for this morning's devotional is The Distraction of Desertion. The Distraction of Desertion. Christ Jesus was called to return creation to a right relationship with the Creator. His task was to redeem man from sin and its penalty of death. However, at the very moment when this calling would be manifested, Jesus found himself standing alone to endure the impending pain and suffering of the cross by himself. Jesus had personally selected the 12 men to walk with, talk with, and to assist him in fulfilling his calling. He invited them not only into a spiritual relationship with him, but also into a personal relationship. He allowed them to see him at times and in ways that many people did not. 
They were allowed private counsel and communion with him in ways that many of us today can only dream about. They were firsthand eyewitnesses to the truth that God revealed in and through him. That no matter how forgotten and mistreated by the world a person was, he or she could attain both identity and purpose as a bona fide citizen of God's kingdom. They not only witnessed salvation with their own eyes, but they literally assisted him as he performed miracles that could only come from God himself. Yet, at that moment of truth, that moment when they were required to declare this day who they shall serve, they all deserted Christ Jesus. Each and every one of the twelve disciples literally left Jesus to fend for himself before an enemy that intended on killing him. Many of us have, have some experience with desertion. We've all connected ourselves with other persons under the umbrella of purpose only to realize that as we drew closer to fulfilling this purpose, these same persons deserted us when we fa when we are faced with adversity and opposition. Yes, quite a few of us today are intimately familiar with the pain associated with desertion. There are wives and husbands on this call this morning who remember the day when they returned home from their previous destination only to find out that their spouses have left. They left us with no notice or provocation. They left us holding the bag. They left us responsible financially for not only maintaining our households, but also for maintaining what other, whatever form of family that we have left. They left us without providing us with rhyme or reason. Children are left questioning why their parents are no longer visibly and tangibly a part of their families. Abandoned spouses are left wondering how they're going to do on their own what literally requires the presence of both spouses to successfully accomplish. And through it all, these spouses are left holding nothing in their hands except the agonizing, gnawing feeling that all that was has been snatched away in one valiant move of selfishness and self-centeredness. There are business owners on this call this morning that recall the day that they were informed by their business partners, uh, informed that their business partners were suddenly and abruptly pulling out of the business. Those partners left us responsible for cleaning up the messes their exits caused the business in terms of owning, operating, and managing it. Whatever economic future we envisioned was now a picture of broken dreams. Whatever professional goal we once strived for was now in shambles. The reason why we partnered together in the first place was because the dream was just too big for either us, either of us to handle and pursue on our own. We developed this professional relationship with the intention, the explicit intention of expanding our economic foundations and elevating our professional attainment but now we're forced into a situation where the very real potential of professional failure looms over our heads. But even worse than experiencing the pain of having a friend, a spouse, a relative, or a business partner desert us is the pain that we experience when desertion occurs in the context of ministry. I'm talking about the pain that we feel when someone we have viewed and accepted as a spiritual leader and or covering unexpectedly, unexpectedly disengages from us, leaving us to either sink or swim in the hostile environments that ministry takes place within. I'm talking about the agony that we feel when that person or group of persons that have connected themselves to us as our co-laborers co in ministry literally abandon us in the face of both spiritual and secular opposition. Here we are, trying to engage in some activity meant to edify, encourage, and equip God's sheep to be productive kingdom citizens, and the persons that we thought were part of the kingdom construction team become missing in action. Why has this happened to us? How do we recover from this? What are we to do? And why would God, who commissioned us as Christian disciples and stewards, allow such events to, to occur in the first place? 
You know, for the past two weeks, God has educated us about the spiritual distinctions between a distraction and an attack. The hell and habit that our adversaries, both spiritual and secular, are wrecking in our lives are distractions designed to prevent us from operating in our callings as Christian disciples and stewards. We haven't been attacked spiritually until we fail to actually fulfill our callings. You see, distractions come in many forms, and one of the most effective distractions that our spiritual adversary uses against us is that of desertion. He loves to influence and persuade those persons that have pledged to stand with us to suddenly and abruptly abandon us to deal with the requirements and the cost of our discipleship and stewardship on our own. The enemy is so afraid that we will actually liberate God's sheep who are currently enslaved to their strongholds that he's determined at all costs to stand as a barrier between us disciples and stewards and those lost sheep. One of the particular ways that the enemy seeks to prevent this very liberty and elevation is by sowing disunity among the disciples and the stewards. In particularly, the adversary has become extremely adept, extremely adept at encouraging and facilitating discord by causing the members of the body of Christ to willfully desert one another. The enemy's hope is is that if we're forced to bear the responsibilities and costs of our discipleship and stewardship alone, then we'll be less determined to engage in them. If the weight of the ministry, if the weight of a ministry that's too heavy for one person to carry into God's presence is capable of being transported there too with the help of other saints, then the enemy sows seeds causing dissension among the ranks. The thought is, if one person cannot carry it by himself or herself, and I run away all his or her help, then I've stopped ministry from occurring. But the devil is a liar. In Matthew, Jesus' enemies, the chief elders, the scribes, and the Pharisees, believed that if they could separate Jesus from his followers and debase him in front of the masses by killing him, then his ministry... Uh, that would, would come to a complete end. Little did they know that God's purpose wouldn't be stopped by killing his influence among others. While yes, it would have been something to witness the 12 disciples to, to go to the cross simultaneously with him, Christ Jesus was capable of fulfilling God's plan for humanity's redemption by himself. What is God saying to each of us here today? Our God-given callings require us to fulfill them. It would be nice if other persons would assist us in the fulfillment of these callings and vice versa. Our, it, 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 it would really be nice. I mean, in fact, it would be wonderful, if we're going to be honest, if persons would come alongside and be with us from the time we start to the time we end, that they would help us equip uh, these spiritual assignments uh, that God has given us to us individually. Now, we can't let the fact that just because someone who once claimed to have our back um, once, when they leave us to deter us from stepping up and stepping out in faith to do that which God has called us to do. We can't let the fact that what lies ahead may require us to accomplish it on our own to act as a barrier between us and the completion of God's will. We cannot let other person's inability to stand boldly in the face of opposition calls us not to stand boldly in, the, in faith as we serve God. There's another point God has for us regarding the distraction of desertion. Sometimes desertion occurs because the next stages of ministry that God is taking us to are stages that not everyone can join us on. In such instances, these persons would be more of a hindrance than they would be a help. Not everyone is spiritually and mentally prepared to pay the costs that need to be paid in order to create the glory for God that he deserves. Here's a secret from God. Many of the occasions where other people desert us are really God pruning other persons from our lives so that we may grow unhindered into the vines that produce good fruit. 
if the disciples had stayed with Christ Jesus, it's possible that they could have interfered with the objective of Jesus' calling. They could have performed so miserably at faithfully enduring Calvary that more persons were turned away from God than they were meant to be drawn to him. Listen to what God is saying. Stop allowing another person's desertion to distract us. Instead, praise him now because that praise him because now it's just him and us. The Lord has provided a canvas in which he's able to paint a spiritual masterpiece of impossibility. And he's done it regardless of who's with us or who's not with us. So stop stressing over who has left us here to deal with this calling by ourselves. We are never alone. Our God has promised us to be that he will be with us to the end of all time. So let us continue to push forward. Let us continue to seek him and to serve him without stressing about who is here and who's not. In closing, remember, we're wonderfully made. And when God made each of us, he placed within us the intelligence, the strength, and the ability that we need to accomplish our callings. When other persons desert us during our moments of truth, don't get distracted. Just remember that desertion is just a distraction. Stay focused on the mission at hand and keep moving forward to our Calvary moments because it's only when we pass through Calvary that the Lord God is able to transform what is merely human into what is totally God. Amen. Amen. Let us have a word of prayer. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, we come before you in humility and with a bowed head. God, you are so much God. That in the end, we fully realize that the only entity that we're absolutely certain that we needed was you and you alone. However, it's when we're going through the ordeal that we become the, shake, the shakiest. If the truth be told, we become shaky in being obedient to you because we, we've er erroneously relied upon others for our support, our source of love, strength, and resources, instead of turning to you, the source of all that is good and holy. And when those who we place our faith and trust in have abandoned us, we fall ever so deep. But thank you, God, for catching us no matter how far we fall. Thank you, God, for restoring and returning us to the ministry that you called us to. Thank you for never abandoning and deserting us no matter how many times we've deserted you to deal with the cost of Calvary alone. God, we ask now that whatever emptiness was created when other persons deserted and abandoned us, you fill us with your blessed Holy Spirit. We ask now that whatever gaping hole that was created in ministry when other people have left us to face the challenges of our Christian discipleship and stewardship alone, you take this opportunity to fill it with meaning and testimony that blesses and glorifies. God, we know that you're, a, you're our strength and our redeemer, redeemer. So come now and embolden us against the distractions of the adversary. It's in your son's mighty matchless, marvelous, and magnificent name that we do pray. Amen. Amen, everyone. Amen. We just had our morning devotional. We pray that God has blessed you, that God has spoken to you. You know, many times we don't realize just how many people are affected by the distraction of desertion. That there are so many people who, when we started out doing that, what God wanted us to do, when we started out trying to serve God, we, we, we had colleagues, we had partners, we had support. But as we have moved forward, what we've realized is that people are falling off to the left, falling off to the right. And then when we look up at one point, it looks like we're all alone. But here's the great thing about God. The same God that promised he'll never leave us nor forsake us is the same God that when everyone else abandons us, he's right there with us. He's a God that sits closer than a brother or a sister, a mother or a father, a best friend or a partner. Partner. He's a God that's right there with us every step of the way, speaking to us, encouraging us, guiding us, edifying us, counseling us, informing us, educating us, providing us, protecting us, literally giving us everything we need so that we will be successful in this thing called ministry, this thing called discipleship, this thing called stewardship, that we would have no reason to doubt, no worries, that we too would be able to 
walk on top of the water just like he is all because he's with us. So when people desert you, don't be upset. In fact, you ought to praise God because what it made me is that they weren't qualified. They weren't capable of be, of going with you. In fact, many times we find ourselves crying and upset over people that God never meant for to be in our lives to begin with. In fact, God has done everything he can, including emailing us to tell us to let that person go so that he can bring us to the point where he wants us to be, if not also bringing us to the person he has designed for us in our lives. So don't be upset. Don't worry when people leave, when people uh, desert you. In fact, praise God, because that means you are now in the environment. You are now in a situation where God has set you up for success, where God has set you up to be the recipient of the of a miracle, where God has set you up for people to look at you and say, you're an impossibility. That's what we that's what we really want from God. That's what we really want to see. God do the amazing in us, through us, and in our lives. Uh, even when people have discounted us and left us by ourselves. Amen. Amen. Let's do this. Let's now switch gears from our devotional to the prayer section of our call. Let's now get ourselves in a posture of prayer where we... Um, can uh, petition God and to ask God uh, and beg him and plead with him and do whatever it is that we need to do with God so that God would move on our behalf. I believe that God is present with us. I believe that God is right here on this call. In fact, let me tell you how much he's on this call. We prayed for a, 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 a prayer warrior's father and, I, and um, a, a fellow frat brother and his wife because his wife was going through cancer and she was not on the call she had sent us the prayer request and we shared it with everyone and we all prayed about it during a call she sent me an email this week to say that her father is doing better her father's on the way to recovery she also said she also said in that email that the frat brother and Sara, the Sara who's dealing with the cancer. She's making progress uh, with her cancer treatment. She's not feeling as much pain as she did before uh, because of the cancer. And that, and I know that's only because God was present with us when we prayed for her father, when we prayed for our Sara and our, and our frat brother, uh, that God heard that and God had already started making a way for these individuals um, right here on a Wednesday morning prayer conference call. I'm sharing that with you to say that our God is present, that if there's something you need, there's something you want God to do, there's something that only God can, can uh, accomplish in your life, we don't want you to sit on your prayer requests, your praise reports, your prayers, your words of encouragement. We want you to share them. So this is how you do it. Just give us your name and where you're calling from and we'll go from there, all right? So let's open up the floor for our, our prayer requests this morning. If you have a prayer request, praise report, prayer, or word of encouragement, jump in, give us your name, where you're calling from, and we'll go from there. <laughs> 